every so often, Hollywood likes to dip back into these classic tales that have worked before and try to put a fresh spin on them. And as we all know, nine times out of ten, they fail at doing so. But I do think that this movie in particular is a unique situation because it's only taking a piece of a classic story and adapting that. Slight variations from the norm can sometimes mean the world of difference. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? The Last Voyage of the Demeter follows the crew of the merchant ship Demeter traveling from Romania to England. It is based on a chapter from the iconic Dracula novel. Right off the bat, I'm going to start this off by saying I'm a bit jealous. Since watching Francis Ford Coppola's Bram Stoker's Dracula, I've always felt that this portion of the story would make a great standalone movie. I always kind of dreamed of adapting it myself someday, but somebody beat me to it. Such is life. Congratulations, you played yourself. As for how they pulled this movie off, if I'm being honest, there was things I liked about it, and there was things I didn't like. First and foremost, and above anything else, I really enjoyed the atmosphere in this film. Something that we all know is missing from a lot of modern horror movies. There's just something about being stranded on this rickety old ship in the middle of the ocean, with the rain and the fog and the waves clouding your vision. And on top of that, you have this evil entity stalking and killing the crew one by one. It has a very gothic, old school look and feel to it that very much fits in with what I think of when I think about the source material. And I appreciated that. I like it a lot. And I'm no expert, but everything did feel authentic to the time that it was taking place in. A lot of times these period pieces will feature dialogue and acting that feel very out of place and very 2023. I never really got that feeling watching The Last Voyage of the Demeter. The characters, while there's no one who is particularly memorable, they all serve their purpose. To me, this movie straddles the line between featuring real characters and just bodies to feed to Dracula. If he dies, he dies. To me, it's always awesome to see Liam Cunningham, who plays the captain in the film. One of my favorite characters in Game of Thrones was Davos, and he brings a little bit of that Davos energy to this role. Corey Hawkins of Straight Out of Compton fame plays the lead in this film. A highly intelligent deckhand who's trying to find his way to England. He really is the heart and soul of the movie, and I dug his performance. Grinding, man. Working. Even if, again, his character does end up being a cliché from time to time. It's a little lazy from a character perspective, but it's nothing too egregious that it took me out of the movie. As for the horror elements, it's kind of a mixed bag. The pacing of this movie has a kind of slow burn feel to it. And it does a great job using atmosphere and pacing to build on this feeling of impending dread. There are also moments of genuine tension in this film, which I enjoyed. One scene in particular that sticks out to me involves one of the younger members of the crew being stuck in a room on the ship. Another was a moment where two of the crew members are high up on the main mast preparing for a fight. And it's very foggy and Dracula is flying around them, but you can't see him and all you really hear is the flapping of his wings and I felt like that was a really cool scene. We are screwed. Hey, no, hey, I don't want to hear that defeatist attitude. They also put a fresh visual spin on how vampires burn up in sunlight. I really felt like they made it look more painful than we've seen it portrayed in films in the past, with the person's skin slowly burning at first until eventually they are completely engulfed in flames. It's just a little added wrinkle of brutality that I thought was a nice addition to the lore. Also, I have to mention that this movie is not afraid to go there in some instances. Absolutely no one is safe. Damn! In a lesser movie, I think it would have been obvious that certain people were going to make it out of this situation. And to me, that wasn't the case in this movie. The story kind of runs parallel with these journal entries that are presumably ripped right out of the novel. The movie does kind of abandon that narration at some point throughout the film, but I did enjoy the attempt initially 
to connect it to the book in that way. Now to be clear, I've never read the original novel, and I only have some knowledge of what's in it based on previous movie adaptations, but I definitely cannot speak to the accuracy to the source material. I will say that on more than one occasion, to me, it felt like things were very obviously being added. Such as lines of dialogue that come off as very exposition-y and are designed to beat the idea home into the audience's head that this is a Dracula movie if you didn't know already. Message! And most of that dialogue is delivered by this stowaway character, which to me was the one character who felt out of place and kind of tacked on. I guess I'm trying to say that there are very obvious moments throughout the film where it feels like they try to Hollywood things up a little bit. I think the biggest flaw of this movie by far is Dracula himself. Or more specifically, how he's portrayed visually. I know there's some people who are probably tired of hearing me say it, but there's absolutely no getting around it. The use of CGI is almost always a fatal flaw in situations like this. You f***ed up, bitch! And the worst part is, is that Dracula, this Dracula, could have easily been brought to life practically. And if they would have done that, it would have made the whole dynamic of the movie immensely more effective. I also think that even if the character wasn't CGI, I do feel like they just show Dracula a bit too much. Stop it! I would have approached this idea slightly different and would have had Dracula in the shadows even more so than they have him in this film. It's that old adage that what you don't see is far more effective than what you do see, and they should have leaned into that a bit more with a story about Dracula killing off crew members one by one. To me, if you're going to show him at all, there should be a strong build-up to his appearance. In a lot of ways, that part of the film just feels like a missed opportunity and like they could have done so much more. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. I also would have leaned more into the religious ramifications of the spiritual characters coming face to face with the devil himself, forcing them to question their beliefs and the way they see the world. And they touch on that a little bit, but I would have preferred a bit more to add some more depth to the situation. Overall, despite my gripes, I still found enjoyment in this film. It very much felt like a throwback to a simpler time in movies, with both the references to the classic Universal Monster Cinema, and how it feels like it could have very easily been a movie that was made in the late 90s, adjacent to Brendan Fraser's Mummy movies. To me, it just had that kind of feel to it. I was entertained throughout, I was engaged in the story, and to me, it was a decent way to spend a rainy Thursday afternoon. To me, The Last Voyage of the Demeter was a fun but flawed experience, and that's why I'm going to give it The Cat House. Saved by kitty litter. <laughs> Y'all be cool. Right on.